A major step in the Kansas City streetcar tonight. The first one arrived in Kansas City. It arrived this morning from New York after a small delay. There it is. The 77 foot long, 78,000 pound car will now undergo several rounds of testing. The streetcar is expected to open in March. But tonight, 41 Action News digs deeper into what this streetcar is actually costing you. Investigator Andy Alcock joins us now to tell us why some think this project is on the wrong track. Brian and supporters say this roughly two mile stretch of downtown streetcar track has helped spur hundreds of millions of dollars in area investments. Critics say taxpayers are the ones being taken for a ride. Right now, it's a big hole in the ground. Come January, construction is scheduled to begin on the $18 million Hilton Home 2 extended stay hotel at the corner of 20th and Main. Kansas City Sunflower Development Group is spearheading the project located right on the new streetcar line. It was really one of the deciding factors for us in, in, in choosing the site. I think we're already seeing the return on investment, and I think it's coming in even faster than city officials anticipated. City leaders point to more than $1.5 billion in proposed or completed construction projects in an area around the streetcar known as the Transportation Development District, or TDD. According to a recent survey of the developers for those projects, leaders responsible for more than $600 million of that $1.5 billion of investment said the streetcar was a positive factor in their location decision. The streetcar would provide you know, our, the hotel guests a way to get from downtown to our hotel uh, and access all the great restaurants and, uh, and, and nightlife in Kansas City. But for local activists, Sherry DeJanes, the project is on the wrong track. A streetcar not desired. Why do you think this is a bad deal for Kansas City taxpayers? Well, number one, you're not getting enough bang for your buck. According to city records, the streetcar project cost about $100 million to build. Federal grants covered over a third of that cost. Just under $63 million in construction bonds covered the rest. The debt service for that bonding is $4.4 million a year for 24 years. According to the streetcar's current budget, it will cost about $4 million to operate the system in the next year. With the debt payment, the total cost of the two-mile stretch is $8.4 million in the next year. It does not work out economically for the you and me's that are affected by that. Who's paying for the streetcar? Anyone who buys something anywhere in Kansas City is contributing a portion of sales tax. There's also an additional tax on commercial, residential, city-owned and non-profit property within the TDD. Plus, there's an additional 1% sales tax within the TDD and a yearly parking spot tax. Currently, the total money collected from all those sources is about $10 million a year or $1.6 million more funding than is currently required to pay the streetcar's annual budget. We feel like that's the, that's the price of having the streetcar. One group not paying? The estimated 2,700 daily streetcar riders because there's no fare. The cost of administering the fare almost negates the income that you would get. Various studies done on streetcars have mixed results. A Cato Institute study states the only thing rail transit can do that buses cannot is cost lots of money. The Reason Foundation cites increased private development and property values in Portland, Atlanta, and Tucson. But a Brookings Institution study says a well-designed bus route can spur economic development at a far lower cost. No matter how you slice it, it does not work out to be as economically feasible as a bus system. The Federal Transit Administration is overseeing the streetcar project. FTA-funded streetcar research concluded the relationship is not clear to development and found a bus route can carry five times more people per hour than streetcars. The study also noted streetcars' slow speed and frequent stops cause more congestion. You're going to have collisions. You're going to have traffic tied up. The developers, the business owners know that that streetcar stop is going to be there long term. Now, we should point out some of those area developers and business owners who are paying the streetcar tax are also asking for or getting other tax breaks. For example, the Kansas City Star recently entered a new two-year deal which effectively cuts its streetcar tax nearly in half for its massive downtown distribution plant. Reporting live in downtown Kansas City, I'm investigator Andy Alcock, 41 Action News.